coming up in one minute on the Jack and Around <laughs> podcast. You know, um, <laughs> remember when we got to we got to meet Arnold Palmer? Yes. Right. And, and so he was hammered. <laughs> he was, he was remember, his, remember his speech was like 30 yes. minutes long. It was supposed to be five-minute remarks. <laughs> 2.33 in the morning, you go, hey, we're playing Charlotte tomorrow. Let's go. Let's go to Pinehurst. And we went to the hotel, packed our bags. And I'll never forget you smoked a joint on the way to the airport. <laughs> And you go, hey, man, is everything cool? <laughs> Am I cool? Am I cool? <laughs> what do you mean? You go, I'm a little nervous. I go, you're fine, bro. <laughs> we get, I remember Curtis Strange yelling at you from the stage, uh, me getting jealous. You were, I never understood in a good your way. jealousy. What, yeah, you you can't. Well, what do you think I freaking thought? I mean, uh, Dirks Bentley and uh, Gary Allen used to open for me. No, I know. That's what I mean. And they're, ah! <laughs> well, je- <laughs> I mean, jealous. <laughs> jealousy I'm talking about in a, in a very fleeting way. Oh, you're not very jealous. Boy, the, the COVID almost destroyed me. Death. Like, I cannot stand not working, not being able to work. This is the Jack and Around podcast, hosted by two-time Academy of Country Music Award winner, Jack Ingram. And now, here's Jack. The Jack and Around podcast is brought to you by Lone Star Dry Goods, a collection of handcrafted quality goods with a truly unique Americana vibe. Visit the world headquarters in the heart of downtown Abilene, Texas, and Willow Park, Texas, in Fort Worth. Visit LoneStarDryGoods.com for more information. Welcome to the Jacking Around podcast, available on your favorite audio platforms and in video on YouTube. For links and info, visit JackingAroundPodcast.com. How you been, bud? I'm going day today. So am I. <laughs> hey, before the uh, big show here starts, I'm going to go have a quick smoke. Remember Drew Brown? Sure. He smoked those little short ones that I smoked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you always had those. Those little short ones. And uh, the reason I did is because I never smoked. I always thought I always thought that dying of lung cancer would be like dying without your seatbelt on. Yeah. Like it's a preventive. It's, it's preventable. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I used to only light his. Oh, nice. I'd get off stage or right before a show. Same thing, like yeah. either, either before or after is the only time I ever really cared. And I'd take his and I'd, I'd hot box him. I'd take like two big old drags. It's funny get- you say hot box. Corey says that all the time. That's her favorite. <laughs> That's her thing. Corey does it. My wife, I keep saying Corey. I want everybody to, like, there's Corey Morrow and Corey Green. But we, we always called it Chick. Both of them are your wife. <laughs> there's Chick Corey and Dick Corey. Uh, but that, that, that was kind of, she doesn't really understand what it's like. And I really, honestly, I say she doesn't. I don't think really anybody knows what it's you like can't. individually to know that, that that 15, 20 minutes beforehand when you're inside your, you know, you don't, you're inside the, the space of whatever hat you're wearing. Yeah, man. <laughs> and, it's, and it's just ping pong and in there and you're like, what's going to happen, you know? So. And all the expectations that nobody, hey, Tweedledoo. All right, y'all do your thing. Hold on one second. I'm going to get another. We're going. No, no, I've got another thing of this. (laughs) Hey, Twinkle Dinkle. What did I call you? What did I say? Oh, something about me Twinkle Dinking around as I'm getting ready for these shows. (laughs) When you were doing it with Craig, I watched that. That was the last episode that I watched when you were doing the show. With him, yeah. And Twinkle Dinkle was... (laughs) <laughs> it was doing the same I told the other day, I go, you're a character in the show. You're like the neighbor. Yeah. Yeah, like, you're the guy that... The, yeah. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing, man? Jesus Christ. You can't see him. <laughs> Jack Ingram. You are rolling, right? Yeah. Matt, Matt Heaven Blow. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Is that what you call a Heaven Blow? I, we, you know, we always had names for everybody. We call them, the, we call them either the Toe... Or uh, the the TPD. We we'd called it. Yeah. We'd show up somewhere where there would only be towels and diet cokes. We called Greg Henry Budget Management, <laughs> 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 and you were Heaven Blow, <laughs> Heaven Blow Management. <laughs> we called it the- back in in our day. That was, I mean, it was. It was Heave and Blow and Budget Management. Those were the only two games in town, right? I mean, there wasn't anybody I remember really. Showing up the floors, you know. Remember that dude who used to run floors? Oh, I don't remember what was the his name. old guy. Yeah, I know who you're talking about, and, and he would I be sh- back in that trailer all the time. Yeah, and I showed up, 
And we'd sold Am like close s- enough to this. Thing? You're fine. Okay. We'd sold like 700 tickets, something crazy good. You know, yeah, 700 tickets for, for tickets, my deal. Yeah. Like, and I showed up and I go, "Where's the PA?" He goes, "Local talent brings their own PA." I go, "I'm not <laughs> fucking. Talent. I'm not local. <laughs> like, I'm not from no, here." Actually, you lived on Eaton Street in San Antonio. You used to That's have a right. San Antonio's uh, address. I remember sending you a letter there one day. That's right, Eaton Street, one ten Eaton Street. Yeah, you know what? That that was one of the things that um, that struck me about you um, as a young as a young man. You wrote me a letter after I'd put out Dance Hall Dreamer and I'd opened a show for you. And it's actually when you were living in San Antonio. Oh, wow. Because the, the, the address was, the, uh, what's it called? The return address was um, was on that road. And I still have it um, in my, I have that top thing I showed you the other day um, with, with pictures and all my That's collectibles. Right. And I have a letter from you. I have a letter from George Bush. And I have a picture of you and me and Arnold Palmer and Winnie Palmer from Houston. That's right, man. Um, I had just a few things like that, you know. Um, <laughs> Remember when we got to we got to meet Arnold Palmer? Yes. Right? And, I, and I was he so, was hammered. <laughs> he was, he was Remember, his, Remember his speech was like 30 yes. minutes long. It was supposed to be five-minute remarks. <laughs> And Ernie, El- I remember Ernie Els was there, and uh, the dude who won two U.S. Opens in a row. Yes, what's yes. his name? Ernie Els. No, the other oh, guy. Curtis Daines was there too. And he knew Curtis you. And I was so jealous. Yes, <laughs> but Ernie Els came back after the show was over, and we were back in our little green room, which was basically a closet. And Ernie, and he goes, he goes, ah, oh, you, you say you're a golfer because I was talking about golf on stage, and we were actually for those that are listening. Jack's a much better golfer than I am. But anyway. We talked about playing Pine- Pinehurst. Pinehurst yeah. And, and so anyway, I, I, he goes, you're not a golfer. He goes, show me your grip. He hands me a butter knife. And <laughs> I put my hand on the butter knife and I show him my grip. He goes, all right, you're a shitty golfer. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I just remember that moment. You were there. And um, I, I, it was just the fact that we were just so, we were so pretty. Uh, that picture of us is really good. It's just funny to me to, <laughs> to think back when we first started. Yeah. And oh, the places you'll go. My, my, my right. mom, I love sending like graduates, high school graduates, that Dr. Seuss book, yeah. Oh, the Places You'll Go. And it's like, I, th- I always thought it was kind of a throwaway or whatever. But think about, like, think about that. We get, I remember Curtis Strange yelling at you from the stage, uh, me getting jealous. You were, see, I never understood in a good your way. jealousy. I never understood that. What? Yeah, you you can't. Well, what do you think I freaking thought? I mean, uh, Dirks Bentley and uh, Gary Allen used to open for me. No, I know. That's what I mean. And they're, <laughs> Je- they went on I mean, me. jealous, <laughs> jealousy I'm talking about in a, in a very fleeting way. Way. Oh, you're not very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm aware of what's going on around me. And then I go, how come you didn't yell my name? Uh, that's I did. It. That's I the did. only thing. That I don't mean jealousy like pissed Fuck off. you too, Jack <laughs> Yeah. But it's just so funny to me that like, that's just one night right? that we've spent Millions. together. One of my favorite nights was in Norfolk, Virginia. And... Um, I had just gotten up at like four or five o'clock in the afternoon and I crawl down off the bus and you're covered in sweat and you've been, you've been exercising. Right. <laughs> Yogging. <laughs> you were, <laughs> yes. And you were, you were just, you know, you, you I was like, God, and I've, you know, I'm this Randy Rogers shaped <laughs> person all my no, life. You just did. And, and, <laughs> you know, and, and <laughs> this magic moment brought to you by Randy Rogers. <laughs> hey, Randy. <laughs> and so I've always been this thing, and, um, and you're jogging, and I was like, that's why Corey talks. That's why my wife talks about Jack all the time is because he cares about <laughs> his appearance. And uh, anyway, it was, that was a long time ago. I rem- now, obviously, <laughs> I, was about to say, I, I remember, I remember caring. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's like, I remember thinking I was behind some behind somebody or they all did behind an eight ball somehow. Not, not did, didn't we? 
I guess. I, I don't think, you know, I mean, I was the opening, opening act for so many bands. Chesney and Keith Urban and um, Dave Matthews. and Shit, you were the opening, opening band in Lubbock. Forever. In Austin. Like for... For you. Yeah. For Christ's sake. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm getting at. I, 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 I got to the point where I was like, man, this is... I'm so fortunate to... That's God. <laughs> God, God. <laughs> um, I'm so fortunate to get to do this for a living, and um, I'll be I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna uh, worry about who's who's the next or the whatever. I was like, man, I'm I'm here. I'm on the team. I'm not. I don't think I'm. You know, I'm not Troy Aikman. I'm not gonna make the Hall of Fame. Uh, but I don't really care. I was just happy to be on the team and happy to be um, making music for a living. How long did it take you to, to where you felt pretty confident about making music? Because I remember when you were young, we we all sucked. Oh, it was so terrible. I was listening to the, <laughs> I you know have you do, you do cameo? I haven't done that. I love it. And, and and so this guy got on there today, and and I was he wanted me to sing a song that I wrote in high school called "Take Me Down to the River," which is a it's a fine piece of work. <laughs> I'm sure I'm <laughs> sure it's fantastic. <laughs> Listen to the rhythm of that old water rolling, and I can hold your body oh so close to mine. Um, there you go. But yeah. Uh, I, so you asked when I thought I could do it. I don't know that I have yet felt like I'm that good. But I, I t I, when Carry On, when I wrote Carry On with Walt Wilkins, I was pretty confident that we'd written it. Was that before Three Days? Same record. Yeah. That's but before. Yes, before. That's when I – I remember when I – okay, so maybe this theme of jealousy might come up a lot because I use it as a term of, like, endearment. I'm down with that. But I remember sitting in my in my driveway, <clears throat> listening. Uh, I was cleaning out my garage, and this is when we still had radios. Mm -hmm. Sure. And listening to 99.5 The Wolf in Dallas, and I heard Carry On. And I go, motherfucker, because I, I mean, you were doing well at the time anyway. You were killing it. Well, uh, I wouldn't say killing it. Well, you were doing good. You were doing really well. We were, yeah, we're, I was making my bills. Yeah, and I remember going, because I had never musically been afraid of you so you know like afraid of me you know like I, I know all these terms that i throw out, but it's like i never really worried about that I'm not part an intim I'm, am I, a I knew how popular you were but i was like i felt like i had my my space and i was keeping it covered as far as like artistically but i remember hearing carry on going oh shit that's for real like that's as good as I mean, who can do who can do better than carry on three days there ain't nothing wrong with that <laughs> <laughs> that's my point nobody ever heard that song uh come on i'm Disagree. gonna figure out forge your cadillac i mean i the, the that's the thing that you don't i think that you you don't give yourself enough credit um because they're you had a ton, a ton of work out there before me and before Corey and Randy and all those guys. Um, you had a ton of work that was really great work. And and I'll and I'll quote you. Um, you you were you like to make songs that are cool that you don't know they're cool until you listen. And um and I, i'm trying to remember i'm really struggling to bring up the song that you were talking about but it was really true um you know you have you you had this way of i don't know uh, you just had this swagger you really did and when i when i listened to you work and when i you know i'd always want to be pete Cotney. <laughs> i wanted to be i wanted to be the guy behind you right just <laughs> You know, in the flashy clothes and beating the shit out of the drums. That's what I wanted to be more than anything. And, and several times I have gotten up on another set of drums <laughs> yeah. and really destroyed Pete's groove. But, um, um, but I, I've always thought 
standing behind you and, and, and watching you on stage. You're one of the few, very few people that I really enjoy watching just because you put on such a show. Um, but, uh, oh, man, how bad I wanted to be your drummer. That's funny. That's funny. Pete would love to change places with you, by the way. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people in my band that would love to be Jack Ingram as well. <laughs> That's funny. So when everything was – so you you started playing, but when everything was happening – Funnest you, time of my life. You seemed to take it so – I remember talking to you one time. I was asking you about buses because I couldn't understand. You told me about some government loan or something. Yeah. Did, was that for real Shit or were you bullshitting man. me no that was real and i still well that bus ended up burning up <laughs> it caught on fire um at Tur ted turner's uh, high school in in tennessee um but it was called a track loan and the government would subsidize part of any commercial vehicle um and so you know they I mean you'd have a balloon at the blah 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 blah, blah. you'd end up owning the bus at a much lower monthly cost, right? Uh -huh. And um, but at the end, you'd pay a little balloon, and you'd have it instead of paying whatever bus company, Roadhouse, J Boy Adams. I love you. Um, Thanks for the air conditioning. Four, uh, Seventy-five bucks a day. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. You gotta have it. You gotta have it. That's true. I'm not getting, whoever you are. You have to have a bus. Anyway, so I did a track loan, and I ended up buying my buses, um, so that I would have some equity in, in you know, business. I always thought business. I thought if you treated the 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 biz side of showbiz, the reason why they say it so fast is so that you don't really realize it's about how make how people make a living. Right. Right. And and you can't really you don't want to go behind the curtain because it's nasty back there and it's dirty. And there's a, what's that? Um, Willis Allen, Alice Ram, uh, Willis Allen, Allen Ramsey. Ram. Uh, the music say? business is a is a cold trench beset on all sides by thieves, vagrants and people with guns and knives. And then there's a bad side. where dreams go to die. Yes. And then there's a downside. It was Hunter Thompson. Okay, that's what I said. Hunter Thompson. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but Will <laughs> Sal Ramsey heard it too. I'm sure that Will has said, yeah, said that at some point in his life. But my point is, is that it's showbiz is, uh, it's dirty. It's one of the darker. Uh, it's yeah. It's not always above board, and it, you get you do get paid in cash, and but you are going to get audited <laughs> sooner or later. Right. So you so you started out knowing that. Absolutely, and I I just wanted to. I mean, I wanted to make a living doing this, but I wanted to. Um, one time I saw my dad's tax return when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I don't want to put the number to it, but I saw it, and my immediate thought was, I'm going to make more than that. Just, just for myself, because that son of a bitch ain't going to beat me. Mm -hmm. You know. So, did I, you? <laughs> just a little bit that's funny man i i got um i don't know i i really got to the point where i i watched everybody around me spend so much money and lose so much money and i didn't i was uncomfortable to watch it you know um, and I thank Michael Tarabay to this day. Uh, you say his name three times and he'll show up. He's like Django Walker. Um, but uh, Michael and I were doing a show in Lubbock. And um, we were getting, I don't know, like $7 a head at the door. Right. At the Depot Beer Garden. Remember beer that garden. place? Of course. That's that, that was, that's. Oh. Uh, Awful. That's the first just, place I played and love it. Or and, second place. But, well, I mean, sometimes the, the bathrooms worked, but some, most of them didn't. Anyway, um, uh, I remember we walked out. Talking about the beer garden across from the warehouse? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, where the stage was next to the toilet. Mm -hmm. um, you could actually pee off the stage into the toilet. Um, anyway, we made $35 a piece, and he was like, I am not doing another show with you. If you don't give me at least $150, I was like, okay, done. But if I make 
five thousand bucks, you get a hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> what do you say? Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it was. It was a turning point in my life. Really, in that is the deal. That's. The, I mean, you. If you, I mean, he gets well. He he got a lot more than that later, but. I know, but I remember feel, having that same argument with guys not in my band. Pete. <laughs> not with Pete, but just remember somebody said, well, Chris Master uh, said. Bucks. And I was like, <laughs> dude. Okay, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about your old, okay, Gus. Clarity. Chris Clarity. Gus Salmon. Uh, 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 Chris Masterson. Masterson was in it from <laughs> Robert Kearns. <laughs> I love Kearns. I Dude, still talk to all those guys. Funniest guy. That guy loved to be naked more than anybody. Uh, a little bit more than me, even. I know, right? You know, and I can say that was some of the most traumatic, traumatic moments <laughs> of my life was seeing you run around <laughs> me in your own <laughs> you bare naked that, lady. <laughs> do you remember that uh, that show we had with? Uh, Blaine, Blaine Martin, Pat, and we were we were playing the amphitheater, yeah. and they had those wings where you couldn't see, and I had a barbecue rib, you were a belt buckle, belt <laughs> naked with the, the with the with Ingram laying there, <laughs> Bill Ingram was <laughs> helping you cook the barbecue. Yes, that was I do. so much fun, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, the antics. The, I'll never forget when we went to, uh, we played whatever that gig was in New York City, that big room. Uh, uh, the some kind of train Terminal station. Five. Yeah. Terminal Five. I always think of it as the train station. <clears throat> and at what, 2.33 in the morning, you go, hey, we're playing Charlotte tomorrow. Let's go. Let's go to Pinehurst. Yeah. And I was like, I sure did. I was like, hey man, I'm opening for you. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm not. Do they need you for sound check? <laughs> <laughs> and you, and we went to the hotel, packed our bags, flew, flew to uh, Raleigh. And I never forget you smoked a joint on the way to the airport. <laughs> Kids, <laughs> listen. Don't stay. Do, stay in school. Don't stay do in drugs. school. Don't do drugs. Watch your language. <laughs> And then when we're, <laughs> we're waiting in the security, this is pre 9-11, I'm uh, pretty sure. Yes. And it didn't matter. You could smoke a joint in a cab back then. And you go, hey, man, is everything cool? <laughs> Am I cool? Am I cool? <laughs> what do you mean? You go, I'm a little nervous. I go, you're fine, bro. <laughs> you're just a little stoned. <laughs> yeah. And then we went and bought some t-shirts, bought some sh collar bought shirts. clothes, rented clubs. Got a room. Uh, yes. <laughs> went and showered. <laughs> I, and, and as I recall, and I, I and I think I'm right in saying that you broke eighty. I think you shot like seventy eight. I think so. And I was so irritated. I, 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 as normal. Well, you know, if you if you smoke a joint in the cab, in New York, and land in Raleigh, <laughs> you should not expect to play golf that well. Yeah, those are <laughs> performance enhancing drugs. Yes, right. <laughs> that was but, fun though. I remember that the reason I shot seventy eight or whatever it was. Was because I listened to my caddy. I remember that. And that caddy, oh, what was that caddy's name? He was so cool. He was so cool. And he'd go, like the pole would be over here. And he'd go, put it right here. And I'd be like, oh, and you'd be like, on. come on, man. I'd be like, I'm doing that. Yeah. That was oh, funny. Oh man, that was that was one of our one of our better days, one of our shining moments for sure. That was fun. I think that night was the night that either your band or my band. Put on each other's merch, the girly merch. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, what we, I mean, this is our whole life was just. <laughs> no, I mean, it job. wasn't even that funny, right? We weren't being funny. Well, we it was pictures, just kind of silly. You know? like, I think y'all had Barbie doll shirts. <laughs> on. I mean, we looked ridiculous. Brendan Anthony in a in a in a you know wife beater size small yeah uh yeah i do remember that god well. that was fun man that was a good tour i i remember being so indebted to you not just, just that not it was at all well <clears throat> i mean there have been times in both of our careers where one of us has been on on a, on a roll and i remember well that, that was the time when i didn't have a whole lot going i think i'd lost a record deal and you were like 
come on open for me. And we went out and did three or four weeks or t- two months or whatever. It was a long, I remember that being a long, well, it was a full Northeast run. I mean, it started in, started in New York, Boston, D.C. And- nope, there's Ava Ingram calling from college. You might want to grab that. What happened? <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, Pat, how old are your kids now? Kellis is... Uh, Did you just get invited? He's about to be 18. Did you just get Rainey's 15. Big news, Ava got invited to the Pi Fi dinner. Come on. Who's Ava Pi Fi? Hey. No. Rainy just got her Hoko dress. Homecoming. For those that don't know what Hoko means. Are you talking about how Rainy's 15. Junior? No, no, uh, freshman. We held her back because she was a summer baby and we didn't want her to be the youngest. In her class, we wanted her to be kids. one year older. We wanted her to be the old kid, and so she's a pistol man. No, she's, she's gonna, gonna make be, her she's decisions. A mother. I'm like, no, I need a little. Yeah, I'm a little off axis. I'm always off axis. Um, I never understood what Corey saw in me. I never got that. She's, she's smarter. She's. She's all that, right? She's, mm-hmm. you know, and um, so I never. <laughs> Should turn the damn thing. Oh, Corey, I'm uh, doing an interview with Jack Ingram right now. Fuck you too, Jack Ingram. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Water well, we're just in it. No, I've got my thing. I have some water. No, I just I think it's great. Yeah, we're we were just about to get into the fuck you too, Jack Ingram story. As a matter of fact. An oldie but a goodie. It's the best story ever. All right, I love you. I'll call you, I'll call you when I'm done. Okay, okay, man. What's she up to? Uh jewelry. That's great. Corey Green jewelry. Uh Coreygreen.com. K O R I. K O R I. Thank you, sir. She is, uh, she is, uh, I always, you know, it's one of the things that I, uh, you know, most people want to talk to her, not to me. She's, she, she has a, uh, she's got charisma. She does. She's got that, she's got a, a real presence. And her face is electric, right? I mean, she's got, like, her eyes are big. And her ears are big, and her nose is small, and her features are just so, and it, it's attractive. Yeah, it's very pretty to look at. And she has interest. And but she takes an interest in who she's talking to. Yeah, she will look at you and not. There's no bullshit, right? It, and that's the thing. Um, and I think if you really want to know what draw, drew us to each other, is that neither one of us. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think. Right, and that's what gets me in trouble most when I'm on stage, especially if I've had a few drinks, and, <laughs> and somebody's out there doing their thing, and I'm like, "You look like an idiot," and then right. I'm like, "Oh wait, <laughs> but so do I." But so what? <laughs> I've got the microphone, you know. <laughs> I'm louder. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but she is she's just so engaging, and um, and present and intelligent. So it's it's one of those things where. Um, so what did she see in you, man? Like, honestly, you've, you've had 20 something years to think about it. I don't, I, I mean, I think I'm straightforward. I, uh, I mean, I'm, I think her dad is a very hardworking man. And I think I'm a very hardworking man. I, I, I mean, I, I was sitting around my ass. Boy, the, the COVID almost destroyed me. It really nearly did. Death. Like, I cannot stand not working. And not being able to work. What did you do? I drank. Right. I mean, um, period. And it was, uh, but, but I, I, I don't know. I work hard. I think I'm, uh, I'm committed. I'm not a, I'm not a run around guy. You know, I think I'm just like every other guy in this world. I mean, I'm stupid, but. Right. Um, does she laugh at your jokes? She thinks I'm funny. And yeah. I think I'm 
moderately entertaining. You, know? <laughs> you are that. Um, uh, she, she says that I absolutely lack an internal monitor. So whatever I think, it comes out. Right. And that leads to fun and embarrassing situations for us. But um, I, 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 I love... I love the two of us. I really, in, I, like, there's not much I enjoy more than being around her. And, um, and, and she is so protective. Of you. Of me and our people. I mean, our people. It doesn't matter if it's that guy sitting right over there on the couch. You, for that matter. I mean, if anybody ever takes, takes you to task in front of her, F you and F the horse you're riding in on. Jack Ingram is one of the baddest mother scratchers ever, and she'll go to town for you. That's that's. I, mean. I also let one one time we were on tour and I had a, I don't know, I, was, I had a haircut that was funky or something. <laughs> and man, <laughs> she'll give it to it you. It was in that Ryan dude was on some kind of uh, reality show with Jessica Simpson's sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What was that? Brian something. Seacrest. It, no, it wasn't Seacrest. It was <coughs> anyway. Well, my was hair was Seacrest. sticking up. And uh she came up to me in Athens, Georgia, and goes, I don't like your hair that way. You don't need to be anybody else. You're you, you be you. And I was like, hey man, I just got a bad haircut. It's just a haircut, <laughs> man. So uh, she's, you she's, tell the story of the night you met Corey Green. Because I uh, I think you tell it better than I do. I remember it as well as you do, but well, if I remember correctly, that was, was also deep one, in of, warehouse. one of the nights, first nights I met you. It, and that's, I think it was the night. I met that's you. my favorite story. It's two stories in one. It was. One was that the owner of the bar came up to this me. This is true. Before the show, or you were doing sound check. And the owner of the bar came up and said, man, that's so cool that you're letting your buddy open up for you. And I go... What? What? <laughs> I, I don't know that dude. And you had you had you had told him, "Hey man, Jack Ingram's a buddy of mine. He wants me to open up." And you told me, "Hey, the bar owner really wants me to open up the show." And I was like, "As I was long like, as you're doing it for free, I don't care." <laughs> I was like, "That's killer." So that was the first night we you met. Gotta want a gig? <laughs> and you had me sign your guitar twice that night. And I uh, got drunk, and you signed it another time. <laughs> and then we're hanging out backstage, and you're playing. You're holding court back backstage. And uh, every, it had been packed that night. We had had a ball. You're playing like, here we go. You told me the song was about me. It was a- <laughs> and it wasn't. It was about like Robert O'Keefe. Cherry Jeff. <laughs> Cherry Jeff. <laughs> but still. You're like, yeah, I wrote this song about you. I was like, we don't even know each other. <laughs> and then uh, <clears throat> and then some chick shows up at the in, 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 through the backstage door and goes, Fuck you, Pat Green, and fuck you too, Jack Ingram. And I was like, "Who? What the fuck? Who's that?" <laughs> That's my girlfriend, <laughs> soon to be wife. Because <laughs> well, I've, I've been ignoring her to pay attention to you. God dang. And uh, yeah, that was a, that was nineteen ninety three. Whatever. Ninety four. Ninety five. Was it ninety five? But um, yeah. Corey uh, didn't appreciate that night at all. I was paying you a lot more attention than I was paying her. That's funny, man. But um, look at you. All my little trinkets are out. Yeah. That was fun, though. I can't believe that, that's it. That's Guy's pen. Guy wrote that. I wrote it with him. But no, I'm, I saying, wrote, no, I'm saying that's his handwriting. Yeah, he wrote that. That's his handwriting. I've um, I've gotten to write with him. I think Jack, I think that guy would have me over to write with him just to um, to to have somebody to drink with. <laughs> he didn't. When I started hanging out with him, he wasn't drinking. Uh, he was totally. I mean, he would. I, I would. I'd call. I would be in Nashville um, when I was on uh, Universal Republic. Oh yeah, and uh, that was Wave on Wave. Three days and wave on wave. What a great wave song! Um, and I would just be in town, and um, guy was just he's just such a sweet fella, and he would you know he would take my phone call, 
And I think he would only take my phone call because he didn't have anything to do. And he really just wanted somebody to hang out with him. I'm not sure that's true, but okay. But we would, he'd, I'd call him and he'd, and I, I, basically I was taking his wine order, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, I want this cab. I want that cab. I want the Chardonnay. Blah, 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 and I was, I'm a Chardonnay guy. And he would have this mountain of weed and he'd be building his newest guitar. Right. And then he goes, hey, he'd be like, you know, we'd write for an hour, quote unquote, which is basically him smoking weed and looking out the window and, and this and this, this scribe, which which is so specific to Guy. Um, uh, and, and this paper is specific. He always wrote on graph paper. And then he would use an X-Acto knife and cut out lines. Anyway, um, and then he'd say, man, I'm going to have a buddy come over and we're going to play some guitar. All right, whatever. And then I usually just slept on that little couch that was outside the workshop. Mm -hmm. You know, I just sleep there on the couch at night and whatever. And, but his, his buddy would be like Daryl Scott <laughs> or Steve Earl or, you know, somebody would come over. And I'd Sean like, Camp, yeah. Yes, exactly. And I'd, and I'd be like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit here and listen. Isn't it great, yeah, man? I'm doing great. <laughs> you know, I just get out of the way and watch those. I, I, I treasure those moments. We never finished this. Me and Guy wrote half of 50 songs. Yeah. We never finished one. Well, I'm not sure he ever finished a song, period. Yeah. I mean, they're all right. so great, but he great was point. always figuring shit out. Great point. Yeah. I remember he, go, he goes, play me a song. So I played him <laughs> what I thought was my best at the time. Yeah, sure. And he goes, well, that just sounds like a Richard Lee song. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. Richard Lee wrote, don't make me brown eyes blue. Okay, fine. <laughs> I was like, fine. Because what he said in such a derogatory tone, like he was bummed out about it. And he goes, play me something fun. And so I played him this song that I wrote with yeah, uh, something fun. John Randall and Bobby Pinson called um, Jones, Bobby Pinson, Jones God, I love Hager. writing with Bobby Pinson. He's a trip, dude. He makes me feel like I'm drinking when I'm not drinking. Yeah, he's great, anyway. man. But anyway, he goes. When I finished, he goes, "Why'd you do that?" I was like, "Hey, motherfucker, you you asked me to play something fun." Like, <laughs> he was a trip, man. I first thought I met him, we were in Lubbock at the God Bold Center. It was him and Jack Elliott um, doing a show. Ramblin' Jack. Ramblin' Jack. And um, and David Henry and just all my uh, Paige Plant and all our friends that are still to this day known within the Texas music industry just for being around all the time. Um, we went back, me and David and, and, and Paige, um, and went backstage and after the show and they were all drinking, you know, late night whiskey, playing pool. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a little pool hall, and I, I lost, I lost. I think I'll say I lost a hundred dollars to to guy. And like years later, he, he opened his wallet and took the check out that I wrote because I didn't have any cash. <laughs> he took the check out. I was like, yeah, you still owe me a hundred bucks. Um, but anyway, uh, they were playing guitar after that, and, and I played Dance Hall Dreamer for him. And I don't remember if it was. If it was Jack or Guy that looked up to me right after I finished, you know. And I'm just an old dance hall dreamer. Yeah. <laughs> and the line was, what else you got? Oh, boy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Not a good sign. <laughs> God damn. I, did, I tried hard. That's funny. That's why I, I used, I would never go. He, I, I met him in like 1997, I think, or 96. But, uh, and he said, come over to the house. Come on, when you're in Nashville, come out. I was like, mm-mm. Mm -mm. I ain't coming till I don't scared. till I don't care what you think. Yeah, but you know what I think what what I don't did you ever get to know Travis, his son? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I, I think once we got to know Travis and that relationship kind of started making its way into guys' ears. Mm -hmm. I think that's when he was more accepting. Well he was he was Always looking for new talent. He was, kind. He yeah, was man. always kind. He'd write with anybody. Yeah, he was kind. That's and that's what I liked about him. And he and, and he had really good taste in 
and booze. <laughs> he really liked and great weed. wine. Yeah, and weed. I mean, I, I mean, kids stay in school. Stay off drugs. <laughs> I think I still have a. Uh, I always got. I was. I would always try and figure keep tabs on which was the cigarette and which was the joint because he'd always have two going <laughs> and one time i stole one of his roaches oh no i still have it i still have it somewhere i should have done that little dna I done that with willie too jesus it was a decade of my life i don't recall but <laughs> i remember that decade yeah you were you were flying high yeah, it was fun Great. There was great moments and there were bad moments, but I'll tell you, I the the moments that um, the moments towards the end where I realized that it's not great to be the drunk guy on stage. It really hurts your feelings to hurts your feelings to not 